What's up everybody, this is Tyler Stephen Georgia Day News, and today I'm going to be talking about what it's like to run newer games on older hardware. Alright, so I decided, you know, I'd be a little bit more professional in this video. I've gone ahead and I've mounted my camera in the, in, you know, in the uh, general area of my studio setup here. Although I don't really have the camera aligned correctly, whatever. It's just going to be a little demo. I might enhance or something. Uh, I've gone ahead and I've taken my very fancy Audio-Technica Artist Elite mic. Because this is probably the best sounding mic I have at all my audio equipment. And you can definitely tell that it's a nice mic. Very, very nice mic. So, um... And we're going to be talking more or less on what it's like to run games such as GTA 5, Warface, that kind of, those kind of games, on a Core 2 Quad Q6600 and MSI GTX 750Ti. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Well, I think you guys might find this kind of interesting. This is my main setup. It may not look like much to the human eye, but it is a Dell Precision T3400 balls to the wall upgraded. This machine contains a Core 2 Quad Q6600, 2 gig or 4, 8 gigabytes of RAM, my bad, a NVIDIA GTX 750Ti rebranded by MSI, and an ASUS NVIDIA GT610. Uh, as you can see, the heatsink on that thing is pretty puny, actually. That was stock, and the south bridge, as you just saw me touching, is extremely hot to the touch when the machine's powered on. It is not even funny how warm it gets. The machine has a total of four hard drives and two optical drives. Both of the optical drives have apparently don't work anymore. I have no idea why. I have to replace them, but as of right now, the cause of them not working is unknown. That card you see there is not a bad card. It's kind of an older card. They don't go for much nowadays, but they are still definitely worth the money you buy for them. They seem to work just fine. The cool thing about the uh, GTX 750 Ti is, believe it or not, uh, it's such a low power intake card that it requires no external power inputs. As you can see, the card is pretty nicely built. I wouldn't say nicely built. It's kind of cheaply built, but it's not expected to go anywhere besides stay in your computer, so you can kind of cut it some slack on that, you know? But other than that, it's, it's not a bad, bad card. Um, I use it to drive my main two 1080p monitors. My two uh, portrait monitors are driven by the GT610. Of course, being this card's design, it has the twin Frozer design uh, cooling system, which is intentionally made by MSI to reduce to reduce the amount of thermal throttling that would be produced by a, um, I forgot what the model is, but it's, you know, the, re the uh, reference cards, reference cards with the blower style design. You can see that's my Asus GT610, not a very good card. For whatever reason, I have this awful burn-in on one of the PCI slots on the board. I have no idea where that came from, but it doesn't seem to be bothering anything, so whatever. Let's power her on and see what she does. As you can see, it's got an older revision of the Dell BIOS. Uh, nothing compared to what's around the market today with the GUI interface. And there's this really nasty um, problem with the um, clock battery. It's kind of ironic because all my main desktops apparently have that issue. I've never had an issue with any of my uh, desktops besides the one I, the ones I use as my main desktops. They seem to have the clock battery go bad in them. I'm not entirely sure why. This machine's been actually abused a lot of its life. Uh, my friend who gave this to me you took good care of it, but when he gave it to his neighbors, they pretty much destroyed it and uh, left it outside to hold up a basketball hoop. And he took it back from them and he gave it to me. So yeah, let's see what she does. Now, the machine does take a little bit to start up, and you can't really blame it because it's got a really, really terrible hatchy hard drive in it. 120 gigabyte as its main boot drive. Although the drive, it, the main boot drive may not be the best, it's not terrible. The machine has a total of 1.2 terabytes with a hard drive space, one 80 gig drive, one 120 gig drive, and of course, one 700 gig drive. And 
and I think that's it, really. Um, no, and a 300 gig drive, my bad. As you can see, I'm just currently making it full screen. Apparently, GTA on my computer likes to just, I don't know, just unfull screen itself, and it, it's kind of annoying. But uh, the machine itself, of course, like any other computer, has this massive lag issue when you try to start up GTA. Uh, you know, when it does, like, the issue when someone's breaking into the car and the... Yeah, you know. Anyhow, the machine, I can't really display it because the capture card I use... Not the capture card, but the capture device I use to import the video off my VHS camera only does 30 frames. Even though the camera is perfectly capable of doing 60 frames, uh, it doesn't come out like that. So you can't really see the full-on beautifulness of uh, 60 frames out of this card. But the machine runs at a 70 plus frames commonly at uh, high settings, not ultra or very high, just standard high, I guess you could say, like normal settings in GTA, being that the low settings are technically normal in GTA. Uh, there's a little burst of lag, and I don't think that was my computer. It was more or less just the, the uh, capture device just kind of taking a crap. But if you just ignore my bad driving, you can kind of see that the uh, it plays GTA pretty damn nice. Now, there's not that many issues. There's not that many bottlenecks. Of course, the CPU being a Core 2 Quad always runs at 100, like not 100, but around 86 and stuff. And when you get Skype launched up and all the other applications, it commonly runs at 97 all the time when playing GTA. And that is a huge issue, but nonetheless, it does work. Other than that, I have really nothing else to show. So have a great day, guys, and I hope you enjoyed this video of my main rig.